A word for our listeners. Season 2 of Masks of Nyarlathotep is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It's not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain gaming podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring George Chimples, Rob Walker, Phil Durham, Shirley Nedswicky, and Justin Kimmett, with Matt Quiet running the table as Keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. As always, I'm Matt and I'm here with Rob. Having a good time. Shirley. Hello. Uh, George. Greetings. And Phil. Howdy from a far off land. Of of Bastin? Are you in the Bastin? I don't, I'm in, what? Are you in Boston? Oh, are, you, are you in Boston, No, I'm Phil? in New Hampshire. New, oh, that's like Boston. I mean, they're right next door to each other, right? <laughs> New Hampshire? Wait, are you actually in New Hampshire? I am in Dover, New Hampshire. I thought you were sick. <laughs> He's sick I in Dover, sick. New Hampshire. That's, that's terrible. That's a bad day. Yes, I am sick away from home. It is pretty awful. Um, and as our listeners are probably already aware, you did not hear me say, and Jesse. Jesse has uh, a very... Died on the way back to his home planet. <laughs> Um, no. Bergen, Bergen, Bergen. So Jesse has um, had had some time constraints in his life. Basically, he's too busy digging up rocks um, and playing in creeks. So cricks, cricks. Yeah, it's true. Southern Indiana, it's crick. Um, so he had to step back from the game. So he will not. No matter what the new intro sounds like, he will not be joining us um, anymore. Uh, we we are disappointed by this, but it happens sometimes. Um, so Jesse's character, Augustus, we're going to deal with him real quick. Um, as we left the last episode, Augustus and Aster, Rob, mm-hmm. yeah, totally yeah. paying attention. I am paying attention. You said you got this. I'm listening. I, yes, I need I need you to react to the description. So uh, Aster, try, try it again. Go for it again. Uh, so Augustus and Aster <laughs> are in an alleyway behind the. Um, the stationary shop where they went to go look for the agent. Um, they had just been accosted by three OVRA um, officers and they, the officers had taken their things, all their money, their guns or their gun. Cause only Jesse had a gun, uh, a knife from you, Aster, and then a stiletto from Augustus. Um, so since Jesse's not going to be here, this is how we're going to play this out. I'm going to describe what Augustus does, which surprisingly what we've come up with does not seem too far outside of what Augustus would normally do. And then we'll go from there. So Augustus uh, waits until they're turned around and are walking away. He looks at you, puts his finger to his mouth like, shh, and then runs dead runs at them to obviously attack them. Um, when, when he hits like barrels into one of them, does knock him kind of over. It was not the lead agent that had the gun. It was one of the guys that had patted you down. The other two guys turn around and proceed to beat him. And I'm and like they hold him down and one of the guys turns his gun on you and the other two just beat the snot out of Jesse's character. OK. Um, when he stops moving and it's clear that he's unconscious at this point, um, he did put up a little bit of a struggle, but two guys kicking or hitting you a lot. It doesn't really do well, especially when you're old. Right. Right. Um, it says you want to join your brother in the prison. I'm going to shake my head no and stay quiet. Are you putting your hands up, I assume? Oh, they've been up. Okay. He's got a gun at me. Okay. I don't have anything. So they kind of like roughly lift him, but still drag his legs um, and then drag him off towards the, the street. How long do you wait before you leave? Um, are they looking over their shoulder at me? They, they are kind of keeping an eye on you because one of you just charged at them. Right. I'm going to wait till I guess they go around the corner, then I'm going to 
backtrack the other way. The other way. Where okay. we came down the alley, right? George, uh, since you're here this week, we're going to assume you're with Phil and Shirley's characters in the cafe watching the shop. Shirley, you have fainted onto the ground to kind of cause a distraction. Yes. Um, the OVRA, uh, there, there are three men. Um, one of them comes inside while the other two watch, kind of watch the front of the shop and watch in the cafe. Um, both keeping an eye out. The one guy comes in and, and uh, says something. Do either one of you speak, or do any of the three of you speak Italian? No, but there's some similarities with Spanish. Right, right. You may not get I the speak full. A little bit of Italian. Just a smidge. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil, do you speak Italian at all? Only Latin. Okay. Um, so, George and Phil, you guys get the idea that he's checking to see what's going on. Uh, surely you hear in your quote unquote unconscious state um, what seems to be the problem here. Is she okay? And the, the shopkeeper seems very. Um, concerned not be about the you cafe keeper yes the cafe keeper oh, okay yeah yeah sorry the, uh, the cafe keeper seems very concerned but not necessarily about you but about the fact that the ovra are in here and mm-hmm. he says no no i've got this taken care of don't worry we'll we'll make sure that she gets any medical need she need, medical care she needs and he says good and turns around and walks out and the shot the cafe owner comes over and like bends over to start to check on you and looks to the two uh gentlemen with her Carlos and Blake, Brian. And he says, it, it's hard to tell exactly what he's saying, but basic, the basic idea is that, uh, does, do you need help getting her to the hospital? No, no. Make kind of like, you know, pacifying gestures. Okay. And, you know, just bend down and kind of lightly, not slap, you know, kind of pat her cheeks. Pat her cheeks, like okay. Um. Can you give me a persuasion roll? Sure. And then, Shirley, would you like to give me also a persuasion? Are you going to wake up as he pats your cheek? Yeah. You want to give me a persuasion roll as well? Flutter my eyes. Yeah. Swoon a little bit. I fail. Uh, By how much? Ten. Oh, that's not that bad. Are you a persuader? No, my persuader is 24. Oh, you didn't do too bad then. Is in alphabetical order, right? Yep. Oh, see, I speak Italian and I'm a persuader. Too bad I'm not there. Oh, wow. Um, so <laughs> I have a 92 over 15. <laughs> um, you start patting her on the cheeks, and she seems almost startled that you've touched her and like grabs at your wrist and then lets go quickly. Um, doesn't seem like she kept her ruse. She was very scared by being t- tapped on the face um, but the shopkeeper seems placated enough and like or the cafe keeper the cafe owner whatever the guy uh, seems placated enough and goes back um, to behind the counter it's probably a good idea for you guys to get going though yeah I would move to um, lift her to her feet okay you help, let him help you up yes okay all right um so it, as you guys are getting up and finishing and like leaving money on the table to pay or to tip or whatever, um, that's when you see Aster by himself come around the opposite corner from where the OVRA guys went um, and head uh, is heading your direction. Are you guys going to meet him in the street or are you just going to motion to go meet somewhere else? Meet um, somewhere else. Right. I'm not going to meet him. Um, Aster, why don't you roll your espionage for me? We're going to play this kind of game. You mean role-playing game? No, no, no. We're going to play the game where we're going to make you roll your skill to see if you would have set something up ahead of time. That's a 60 under 75. Okay. So uh, as as the three of you kind of go out to the street, Aster makes a hand signal towards you very covertly, um, letting you know to head back to the hotel separately from him. And he'll meet you there and, and set you up. Yes. He waves his hands much like a flag guy on a on a battleship. <laughs> yeah. Um, Don't forget the devil horns part. The devil horns, yeah. I love in the audio medium you're using your arms to, to be. A- I'm trying to engage George because he looks a little lackluster right now. What? Yeah, see? You look lackluster. You're luck- luck- he, luck- he, luckering last. He hasn't lectured us about shirts 
or breakfasts <laughs> or the or, Browns or the Browns. I'm focusing on this like theater of the mind thing that we got going on. So I need to have all my senses shut down other than my voice and my ears. Since when? Uh, like 10 <laughs> minutes ago. Ah. <laughs> Is this an, like an experimental thing we're working on? Yeah. Yeah. It's real experimental. Okay. Okay. He he took to heart the no shenanigans request. Yeah. I appreciate I'm this. not shenaniganing. I, just... uh, no, no, no. I, I fully appreciate the lack of shenanigans. Uh, so you guys all kind of, the three of you head back to the hotel, uh, Aster, you kind of go in a roundabout way. Um, you guys get into your suite where you have a sitting room. I just like to pretend that all European hotels have a nice suite with multiple bedrooms and, and a sitting room. So, eh, it gives a consistency. It makes it easy to work with. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so you guys kind of, uh, it's kind of like in uh supernatural where they always have the same room. Every hotel they go to always is the exact same like setup. They have two beds. Oh. X Files does in. that too. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. And it's like, didn't we see? You know what? I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's just a hotel. I just throw a different coat of paint. And put right. Different stuff in there. Yeah. So, um, you guys meet up. Um, Aster, you're probably five ten minutes behind them when you arrive. Okay. I mean, I'll convey what I've what happened. What well, go ahead. Down. Convey. I, oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> well, okay. So you have um, a travel guide for Rome. Uh-huh. That you also found some postcards that you tucked in there. That's right. Um, and then you came out, were accosted. Everything was taken. It, was the travel guide taken? No, the travel okay. guide was not. And the postcards were not because they were tucked in the travel guide. So they didn't see it. They did take the travel guide and toss it on the ground. But, but I, mostly because they were patting you down and, I remember, and taking everything. Yeah, right, right. But they took all this other stuff. I don't care about the other stuff. It's stuff we can replace. Yeah, but the and, travel and, guide and post notes. Yeah. And as a reminder, you do have three pistols, three uh, Walter PPKs. That you got from the uh, Knocked Wolf agents. Yes, that's so. good to have, since I don't have my knife now. Right. That's no fun. I have to get another knife. You can only use two at a time. Two knives? Two guns. No. You well, it's because I only have two arms. No, you can use three. No, you can't. Yeah, you get two Derringers, you stick them both in the one hand, just fire them both at the same time. These are Walther uh, PBKs. Right. The The problem is, is I like to wear coats, and so I can't, you know, bear arms. You have a, ah, it's a bad bun. You have a right to. <laughs> yes, but I don't l- like to because you get rash. That was terrible. It was a good one. <laughs> it's by good, I mean bad. Anyway, so I yeah, I, I tell them what all we got. Here's some postcards. Um, your uncle was a jack wagon. And kept saying spaghetti. I punched him. Then he attacked the people trying to get his stuff back. They took him at gunpoint to me, which. As awesome as I am, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Don't give me that look. And um, <laughs> what I like about it is that it still works in audio format, so it's, it works for me. Um, Wait, so they took my uncle? Yeah, that was the thing that happened. <clears throat> um, Rob, can you roll me? Actually, I want all three of you roll, all four of you. Sorry, Phil, you're not at the table, so I keep forgetting about you. Phil, can you, all four of you, including Phil, can you roll knowledge for me? Pass. Pass. Phil? Sorry, I was uh, putting all the pieces together. I rolled a 78 over 75. Okay. Pass. Pass? Okay. So you guys realize that he's going to be taken to some sort of trial and then, and that it shouldn't be too terribly hard to get an idea of where people are going. Um, as far as when they jail these kinds of people, you'll just have to be very careful about what you're doing there to, to get that information. So it shouldn't be, I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to track him down. It might be hard to get him out, but again, you can wait until they're transporting or somewhere, something along those lines. I do make it a point to highlight that your uncle is some kind of special jackass. I just really want to. Everyone in. knows that. Okay. <laughs> We're all aware. It still doesn't. We can't leave terri- him to rot. Terrible in a prison. spy. He might be safer there. Yeah. No. Well, he's a liability to us. If he's in prison, he's not going to be getting shot at, probably. <laughs> is it a risk to our cover if we work to release him? If we get caught. Obviously. Apparently he can only say spaghetti, so I don't know how much of a problem that will be. Yeah, he really doesn't have much in terms of defense. I'm not sure no, lasagna is going to get can you we far. Not use like the government or the church to get him sent back to the states. At I least. don't think the church will help, but we could probably contact the government. Brian, well, the church might if they view him as a charity case. 
Or maybe. Um, I mean, you know, the church within the Vatican certainly has a lot of power. I don't know how much sway they're holding over the government here right now at this time. Oh, you know how these Italians are. I mean, they're really down to earth people. They're like the Spaniards. Really down to earth people. They'll do what the priests tell them to do. Actually, um, yeah, that's yeah, sure. No, that's fine. Carlos is correct as far as he's concerned. I like that. Mm. All right, so I would suggest that I go to the church alone and see what I can do on his behalf. We probably don't want to continue moving as large groups, and um, not having you with me will get me... Well, I mean, I can just... I don't know. You guys can come if you want, I guess. But you didn't make him roll to persuade for that. Sure, I'll come. <laughs> That's because he's not lying. He he thinks that he can work this out, and it's going to be easier if you're not there. That's mostly the truth. That's not like, I got attacked by a wolf. <laughs> Was mostly the <laughs> truth? <laughs> um are you gonna? Are you heading off now by yourself, Phil? Uh, assuming they accept your suggestion. No, I said I'm Carlos going. Carlos oh. said he's going. Okay. Oh, it's another Blake and Carlos go to church moment. Exactly. Okay. Um, Shirley, can I get you to? Did, so you put the? I assume you put the the guidebook on the table. Yep. Did you pull the postcards yeah, yeah, out? Yeah, I showed them that and showed them. Shirley, can I? You have? Do you have art? Yes. Can you roll that? As much as I thought. <laughs> she failed at the mort, mort, mort. Oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, 74 over 59. That's It's close enough. Um, so what you see on the, the postcards is that these are all known statues. Like, you would have learned about these in school. Right. Um, these are known statues mm-hmm. in Rome. They're called the, the talking statues. And there's there's a lot of rumor behind them, but that they talk to people. Like, they're magic statues. Is what people believed at one time. Right. Um, you notice, you recognize two of them as Pasquano and Lucrezia, which are the two agents you're supposed to be here for. Oh, hey. Or Pasquino or whatever. Where did you get these postcards? Did they come from the They were from the shop. shop? Right, right, right. I'm sorry, Rob. No. I didn't realize you were looking <laughs> for me to be for answers. <laughs> I, I unfortunately, am, am a little outdated right now. I apologize. Well, it has been a couple of months. Yeah, something along those lines. So we got them from the shop. Uh, so these two statues here, these are two of the uh, agents we were supposed to meet. Pasquale and what are the other one? Lu- Pasquano and Lucretia. Lucretia. <laughs> um, Lucario, spaghetti. Lucario and Pasquale, gotcha. There are five postcards. Lucretia. There are five <laughs> postcards laying there. Mm-hmm. You know that there are six talking statues. They're called the con- uh, Congregation of Wits. There's one missing, though. Do I look through them and tell him which one? Um, you're not sure the name of each one. You only recognize those two because you were thinking the about Lucretia ages. and Pisquano. Yeah. You could look it up. It, it and probably is in the tour guide book. It's mm-hmm. not like yeah. it's that hard. Um, you'd have to do a little bit of researching. Sure. And there's nothing written on them. Just the pictures. Yeah. Uh, no. It's just a. It's just a postcard. So I mean, it has like a place for a stamp and a place for you to write. And that but kind of stuff. nothing was written. On right. Um, so Pisquano. Which, you, which surely you know is actually the uh, Greek statue of King Menelaus, um, is no, located off the southwest corner of Piazza Novana. Um, sorry, I have to read through all this to get to pull out the information I need. Um, Marfano, Mar, I'm, I'm sorry, Marforio um, is a statue of Ocean. Or Tiberius, ocean being the god of ocean. That's located in the Capitol, Capitoline Museum's courtyard in Palazzo Nuvo, Nuovo. Sorry. Um, Madame Lucretia is the only female statue. She can be found against the wall of Palazzo Venez- Venezia in Piazza San Marco. Um, it's possibly a statue of the goddess of Isis. Um, there are three other statues, uh, Abate Luigi and Piazza Vidoni, Il Facino. 
Poor favor. I, I hate you guys. Uh, I believe if you had done your homework, you would be saying the correct word there, which is bongiorno. Oh, that's right. Do your homework. Waluigi? I, did yes. it, I didn't know I had an assignment. It wasn't on the chalkboard. Il Babuino, the baboon. Um, and that's in the Stranger's Quarter. Uh, El Facino is in Via Lada in the Hall of the Bank of Rome. Um, well, Madame Lucretia is going to be hard to get to because that's like right next to like the palace um, where Mussolini lives. Um, but you could definitely check those out. If honestly, if if they use those two names, it may be that they use those two names to hint at where they leave information. So it may not be the one you're looking for is those two, but one of the other six. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that seems like, I mean, Rob, you know that this is the kind of thing that they would do is they would name themselves after yes. something that is tertiary. Like there's a couple of steps you have to take here, but they're not terribly difficult steps either. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and those postcards were relatively out there like it was they weren't like tucked away or anything and there weren't a ton of other uh, postcards either they were meant to be found so Blake and Carlos Carlos I want to call you Caster that's yeah, not that's right. right Casper Caster Castor why um I don't know because Carlos plus Astor did you yes. recently watch face off no <laughs> why would I watch that movie because it's entertaining because it's the worst scream ever in the entire history of screams. So Carlos and Brian, you guys are headed to the Vatican again, correct? Yes, I will have a conversation with Carlos on the way. Okay, go right ahead. <clears throat> Carlos, yes, how do I'm you here. feel about what we should do to help um, my brain's a little dead. What's Augustus? Um, Augustus. What should we do about Augustus. Keep him away from us? I had a similar thought. I thought I might see that if the church is going to intervene in any way, perhaps it would be to release him but have him deported. I would agree with that. Send him back to America for his uh, American cousins can take care of this witless soul. I'm glad we're in agreement. Um, I don't think that we should what do you think we should tell the group? Just that that was what the church decided, or? Sure. Okay. Works for me. Wow. It's always a good path when the, when people decide to lie to the group. Right, Rob? I've done it a couple times and it succeeded. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm making a habit of this. So you guys uh, arrive at the Vatican. Again, you're greeted by guards and so on and so forth. Carlos, are you going to push to go in with him, or are you going to kind of hang out in a, like an outer chamber room are they going to keep me from from going in um no but you get a lot of looks that yeah. doesn't bother you though does it no okay. doesn't even slow you down um so you guys go in uh brian how are you presenting this are you calling on your contacts and in, in your deep secrets or just like asking the church to help you out um so i would probably try to speak to um, whomever we first met Grave. when we came here last day. Well, no, I thought we met with Grave later. Right. There somebody okay. we met with before Grave? Yeah, there was another priest. Right. So I would think <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, that he might have some idea that I'm somebody, even if he doesn't know who exactly I am. Okay. So if he's available, I'd probably meet with him, and I would just ask him and then see what his response is. Okay. Um, you you have to wait 15 minutes or so, and then you're taken back to his little office. It's not – it's rather sparse. Um, and he, mo he, he has you sit and says, what can I do for you? We have a um, friend who was here previously, and he did some rather foolish actions. He attacked a group of um, – help me out with the acronym. O-V-R-A. A group of OVRA agents, um, and <clears throat> he certainly um, should not have done so. We were hoping that the church might intervene on his behalf, um, but 
seeing as that he's not a local, perhaps, um, to meet in the middle, um, have him deported rather than um, suffer any punishments here in this country. And you wish us to kind of push that along? Th- that's our hope. What language are they speaking in? Are you guys speaking in, rather? Um, it would have to be Latin or, or English, Yiddish. really, for me. Um, yeah, it's probably English. Okay. Do you, sp- you speak enough English that you pick up on yeah. all of it? No, I speak English. Um, he stops to kind of think for a second. Um, we can probably make that happen. Um, I understand, uh, Mr. Blake, that you have purposes here within the church, so we wouldn't want you pulled from those purposes t- to look at other things. If we send him home, it will be that he will probably not be welcome back in Italy ever again. Is that going to cause an issue? I think it's the best solution we have at this time for this situation. Unless you hear from me otherwise, consider the situation taken care of. Much thanks. It should God take 48 hours at most, I would think. Excellent. God bless you. God bless you, and, and um, God be with you. That'll Son. teach your uncle, by the way. Um, so you guys are gone for probably an hour or so. During that time frame, uh, Aster and Evelyn, what are you guys doing? We gotta go look at some statues. Oh, you guys are gonna go look for the statues? Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Look at you being proactive and such. I gotta go find them again. Okay, so where do you, which one do you want to start with? You've Pas- got Pasquale. Pasquano? Yep, that's why I said Pasquale. Okay. Um When you guys are walking around, are you holding hands? Yes. No. Very, very fiercely. Ew. It's Rome. It's romantic. Okay, no, seriously, are you guys <clears throat> pretending to be a, a couple? Why would we pretend to be a couple? Have we Pretended to be a couple of because a man and a woman together like this that's an option. That was the only thing without a chaperone. Can't he be a chaperone? It's a very Catholic country because it's a dude. Dudes don't chaperone chicks, chicks chaperone chicks unless they're family. Yes, you're my cousin. We don't look alike. Damn it. Fine. Wow. I mean, you are German and he is French, so I don't even know what that means. You look nothing alike, obviously. Oh. Is she like the Aryan German or the other kind? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think we ever got that far. I mean, it is. See what I look like. I don't know, but I'm cute. Um, <laughs> you do find Pasquano. It's uh, a, a relatively yes. large statue, probably eight and a half, nine foot tall. Um, you look at it for a little bit. Nothing really stands out to you. Can I roll an espionage? You absolutely can. Excellent. Can I get that espionage with an ot seven? You sure can. Um, Under seventy five. You notice a couple of men in fedoras and um, the same way that the other RVR agents were dressed. They're not specifically watching you. Clearly, you may just be looking at a statue, but they're aware of the statue. It's very clear they're aware of the statue and they're keeping an eye on it. Okay. I will. I- I would have brought my sketchbook with me, so I'm oh, yeah. sketching them. Yeah, okay. Statues. And are you actually sketching them or no. just pretending to? No, I would actually okay. be sketching them. I, I'm just asking. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you kind of take a look at that for a little bit. Um, and just for the record, it's uh, the OVRA is the Organization for Violence and Repression of uh, Anti-Fascism. Whoa. So, they're anti-Antifa. Uh, yeah, I know, right? They're similar in their role to the Gestapo, to give you an idea of what they what they kind of are here. Although they're they're not, really good to guys, got it. They're but they're also not as bloodthirsty. Gotcha. So, um, next, which one do you want to go to next? The Lucario. Name. Which one? Lucario. Lucrezia. Lucrezia is going to be right next to the palace. It's probably the least likely to be used. Oh, okay. So he's making like a uh, Pokemon joke, but I don't have gone the other direction with a Sisters of Mercy joke. Which is, go ahead. They have a song called Lucretia, My Reflection. Oh, do they really? Can you sing a, 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 a couple of bars? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, George is just anti-shenanigans tonight. Uh, so which other one? Uh, you have Marforio. 
abate Luigi. Ofa Luigi. Luigi. <laughs> Uh, that's in the Piazza Vidoni, uh, which is the closest to where we're at. That's not the palace or the. I, I you know, honestly, I. Oh, well, maybe I do. Maybe I do know. No, no, no. I, I, f- I forgot. There's a map. Um, I would like mm, to go like sly. follow them. <laughs> yeah, that's the what I'm saying. Trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Abate Luigi is actually the closest. How about there, Luigi. <laughs> Why does he wear green eyeliner? Does anyone Always. know that? Um, because it's, he's evil. Doesn't it go with his green hat? He wears purple. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Waluigi. Okay, Waluigi, not Luigi. Okay. You know what? I don't know. I'm think you are wrong, yet. and you should be educated. Huh? Weird. Waluigi. Purple and green go together. It's a me, Waluigi. You know what? We're just here's here's what we're the gonna Halloween do. Halloween colors. We're, we're gonna g- pretend like they're in order. No, well, the one no. that the one that I want you to go to is not where I want it. We're to gonna s- go play Mario Kart. You end up at Marforio. <laughs> Marforio. You you stop at a couple others. Doesn't matter which ones. You end up at Marforio, <laughs> which is clearly some sort of a statue of a god dealing with water, because it's, he's lounging on his side and there's a fountain in front of him. Um, I need both of you to give me spot hiddens. Gark seven over on that. Okay. Is this one an alphabetical? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every game oh, should, should be. I, in the... I don't know which ones are up in the corner and which ones are on my sheet. They're all on your sheet. I passed. Okay. Um, so a lot. in the pool, it's clearly a fountain, so people have thrown change in there. You see an oak leaf, which doesn't make any sense because, one, there are no trees around here, but, two, like oak trees are not known for this is not their indicative of yeah, this area yeah or whatever right would you like to get in they'll reach in the fountain and get it you can get it without like falling in and dying i would anything. look around for some fedoras uh give me another spot hidden are you gonna help me yeah got it i'm asking him to cover me as i like Okay. Lean into so you pull out the possibly grab it. You pull out the small leaf. Um, this is uh in, inside a closed courtyard in within the palazzo. Um, sorry, I'm trying to. There it is. Um, there is a on the leaf. There is nothing written. But as you're kind of looking at it, you notice light passes through it in holes that have been pushed through it. Do you want to? I will tuck it in my sketchbook so we can take a closer look at it when we get back to okay. the room. Okay. Um, and, and I splash. Uh, what's his face? It's probably been. It's, cute. it's probably been a couple hours since that you guys have been looking at these statues. Uh, well, that would be something that. Uh, a a, a couple would do. Well, we've been holding hands, so <laughs> might as well. We have? When did we make that decision? I thought we skipped over it. Whatever. So you guys are heading back. Um, Carlos and Brian. That's the two people I'm looking for. You guys are headed back to the hotel when... Hold on, sorry. There he is. Let's see what happens when we split the party. Um. Right. Exciting things. Yeah, right? You're accosted by a giant vampire. Stranger Things teaches you that. I haven't seen it. Don't spoil it. I haven't seen season two. Don't Ah. spoil. And you're talking on a podcast. There's an upside down. Don't spoil it. There's an upside down, and they go there, maybe. I'm going to spoil some some things for you. Did Did you see it? Is in it, yes. No, I, I did not. Film. I hear it's really, really good. I'm so glad you guys are getting to enjoy that. You know it's in the same universe because like, the same kid's in it? It's also, the uh, Stranger Things was originally going to be set in Maine, and then the producer said that's too much like But the Stephen kid, King. he rode his bicycle from Indiana to Maine so he could go hang out with his summer friends and go see a clown. And you clown. know what else is in the same universe as it? Star Wars. Dreamcatchers. It is. That's it a is. true. That's true. Yep, it is. So it's Salem's Lot. No, Ooh. it's not actually. They're uh, they're in a different world. Why are we talking about? But this? still connected. Mm. I thought they they're were. Oh, the, okay. This is not Star Wars. Have to do with the game. <laughs> is in it. Christmas. He, he's looking stuff up. Star Wars takes place before it. A long, it long time ago. A long in a galaxy far, far, far away. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so Carlos and Brian, as you're walking back, um, a filthy wide eyed beggar, um, comes towards you, pull my gun and shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the beggar. He seems to be, uh, uh, Brian, he grabs kind of at your, your arm, um, and is babbling in a mixture of broken English and Italian. Um, he's very, he, it's very difficult to understand. Um, but he seems to be calling you, Brian, old man, a bait or father. Um, and then rambling about his message. And then there are other words that are scattered among it that you're kind of picking up. Um, Carlos, you don't speak any Italian, right? No. Or no, you speak a little bit. No, I speak no. Spanish, which has. I oh, okay. You pick up on words like tunnels, snakes, darkness. Secrets, mouth, and baboon. And Doctor Jones. And no, no, not not Doctor Jones. <laughs> Called it. Nailed it. Away, filthy beggar! As I kick him in the kneecap. Do you really kick him? No. Okay. I'm just standing up to the side, I, looking at him like, okay. Look, if Diablo taught you anything, the beggars always has the good weapons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll pull out uh, um a few local currencies assuming okay. i have a few well you weren't robbed um, so yeah in italy they're meatballs <laughs> yeah yeah they preserved and I, I pull out a handful of spaghetti and <laughs> Ew. I, that's what I they use handed, for change yeah that's a spare change is getting uh and then i'll hand it to the beggar as and try to uh, detach myself What's your spaghetti policy um here? You, you hand him the money and he kind of looks at it and like rubs it between his figures and then um, he kind of drops the, the money and seems to be more emphatic in whatever he's babbling about. Uh, Brian, can you give me a persuade check? I got a 94. Whoa. You wow. hella persuaded him. <laughs> got a 94. Yeah, you're really having trouble getting him to calm down. Um, if you guys are with him for too much longer, you're going to get noticed and people are going to start looking at what you're doing. Um, is there an alleyway or anything nearby? Um, you can, Yes, you can pull him down an alleyway where you murder. I mean, where you talk to him. Yeah, let's do that. The murders always happen yes, in let's, alleys. Let's take him into the alley. In okay. bookstores. Um, yeah, you, te- you kind of pull him into a side alley. Um, but he still seems very emphatic about whatever it is that he's babbling about. All right. So I would take my hands with my palms facing down and kind of, you know, motion them up and down like in a calm down type manner to see if I can get him to calm down. Carlos, are you going to help him with that? I'm going to be saying slower, slower in Spanish. Okay. Uh, can you roll, um, persuasion? I mean, like, I don't have that either, but okay. Yeah. Fail. By a lot? Um, 55 over... 24? Yeah, I think so. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but you finally get him to explain in English because you keep asking him his name, and, and he does seem to calm down a little bit, but it's still... He's very manic. Um, he tells you he, isn't, um, he doesn't have a name. He's not a man anymore. He's just a statue that talks yeah sure that makes sense i saw that cartoon what what is it that you would like from us um he starts babbling again you pick up on and mostly almost exclusively in italian um you both kind of pick up on the idea that he's uh, afraid of whatever was in the tunnels and darkness and that they took the man that he was and turned him into the statue. Did he say the name of the statue? Um, if when you ask him uh, the name of the statue, he tells it you uh, the statue is called Pasquino. Oh, great. We will do what we can and I'll try to turn and walk away. Wait, I'm going to say why us? Why do you have to tell us? I have to tell someone. Okay. And where is this tunnel? Underneath. Underneath Rome? Near the Vatican. Right. 
and snakes, you said? Yes. And a baboon? You call him Dr. Jones, lady. (laughs) That's a different country. (laughs) Yes, and a baboon. What's the baboon? It was there. Wasn't one of the statues called the baboon or something? Yes. One of them was Il Babuno or something. My Italian is phenomenal. Yeah, great. Um, well, this is a sad guy. Do you have anything else to tell us? Um, he starts babbling in Italian again. Um, can you both give me an idea roll? Pass. Pass. Uh, if he thinks he's Pasquino, um, he might be the person you're looking for that was that's missing. Pasquino oh, yeah. was the agent. Do you want to leave him out on the street? You might be able to sneak him into your your hotel. Uh, do we, do we want a clearly insane person in our hotel? Sure. Well, I mean, you you just had Augustus there. Yeah, Dude. and we we sent him on a ship. <laughs> Man, he's not here one night, and he just gets beat up. Do we know that anybody in the party speaks Italian? Yo, uh, yeah, but you guys are. That? Yeah, you're aware that he that Aster speaks Italian. Italian, will Spanish, you come, English, and German? Will you come back with us to speak to a friend of ours? Yes. Oh, okay. To tell him more about the darkness and the secrets. Come on, well, this is a that good player idea. usually likes that. So, let's get you into a warm bed. Um, bath, so, warm bath. So, <laughs> so it takes you guys a little bit longer to get back. You kind of all arrive. Kevin Spacey on them at almost. I'm not sure quite what that means. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> wow. Because because all I'm thinking about is House of Cards where he has the guy climb into the bathtub and leaves the razor for him oh. to cut his own wrist. You're aware of what he's been accused of. Yes, yes, yes. I like to pretend that I live in a world where terrible people are not terrible and I'm just going to keep living there. You should not pretend to live in that world. I want to. Because that's what allows them to continue doing terrible things. Oh, no, I'm not going to watch any more of his movies or, you know, I expect that he will never make anything else again. Don't Except, worry, he will. It makes well, me sad because I like K-Pax. Yeah, K-Pax is different. Anyway, I want to live in that world. Let me live in that world for 10 minutes. Just leave me alone while I'm there. Uh, so he comes back with you to your uh, your hotel. His um, As you're walking with him, his hair is clearly filthy and caked with mud and what appears to be blood. Fingernails are broken and very nasty, like as though he's been clawing at things. Um and his clothes are st- torn and stained, and they look very much like what you would expect a prison uniform to look like. Okay. I better Major D is really happy about this. Does, uh, I assume Blake would have a coat and like a hat. Yeah. Blake, give him your coat and hat. I do. Um, as you get in, you get to the hotel, you kind of walk, take him back up the back way. Um, and as you're getting to the, the suite, um, Aster and Evelyn are arriving as well. We have a magic leaf. <laughs> we found a friend. Uh, who is this? Pasquino. The statue. That's right. That's going to really You know one help. of the agents' names was Pasquino as I well. Know. Okay. Well, okay. Let's get him cleaned but, up a bit first, and then we can ask him some questions. That's really going to help his sanity. Hey, nothing like a good bath to help calm you down. No, I meant her calling him Pasquale. Oh, Pasquino. Look, Jesse's not here anymore. People can remember names. Write them down. <laughs> See, I kind of, I kind of like doing it because it drives you nuts. <clears throat> At least we're not calling him Pacino or Pacinko. Earlick Man. Earlick Man. Oh God, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyways, I would draw a bath for the gentleman and uh, encourage him to. Clean up, rest, maybe have. I assume it's a nice hotel room, so yeah, like a bar, give him a scotch or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he's going to be about half an hour. Do you guys want to talk while he's doing that? About I want to see this leaf. It's got the holes in it, so we can see if we can't figure anything out. Oh yes. Okay, let's examine. You're more interested leaf. in that than what I may have done for your uncle. 
That's a good point. Um, He's dead. Don't worry about him. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 He's just going to no. keep saying that until you put his brain back in. What? Yeah, the Italians killed him. No, they didn't. <laughs> Roll persuade. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost to the ages. Forget him. This is why I haven't got to run a side quest yet. <laughs> yeah. Zoics. So you, I would you ask, are asking? I would inquire as to how it went for my uncle as I'm pulling out the leaf. As good as can be expected. Sketchbook. Unfortunately, the best we what could do mean? was have the church intervene to have him deported. He's on a ship back to America. But he'll be safe. Yes, it's a good thing. I don't know why he said it was the best we could do. I thought it was pretty good. Um, well, I imagine that... Um, Evelyn would prefer to have her uncle here, based on what she said previously. But at least, yes, he'll be safe in America. Well, safe, safe as that man can be. Well, it's better than being shot at dawn and thrown into a ditch. Fair. Wow. I mean, that's how they handle know, these things. I know. Like now, I know. But would she know that that's how they handle things now? Then, currently, during the game time. She's not a dumb girl, and it's not a great era. I'm pretty sure she could put two and two together. Yeah. Right. At least he's safe. What your knowledge is at? Like a five? Wow. I'm on a, it's a 90, thank you very much. I don't even know why that was a question then. <laughs> because you posed it as a question? I don't know. So it's settled. It is a good thing. <laughs> So I would take the leaf and try to sh- put it up toward the light to see if it makes a certain type of pattern. What is this? Yeah, so we found the magic leaf. It. Okay, that's great. What does that mean? It's got holes. We're not sure yet. We're trying to figure it's it out. It's saint-like. What? Holy. Saintly. Oh! oh! I don't understand this joke. What? You got to work on your English. No. Why do you have a leaf? We found it in the pool of one of the talking statues. I look at Blake. Like I'm not understanding what this why why they are playing with a leaf. You guys found it, well, a talking it, statue. It is also not a leaf. It's a piece of paper in the shape of a leaf. Okay, that's better. So yeah, um, what is what the holes poked through is very kind of condensed and not great to make it easy for you to see what it is. Mm-hmm. But you do make out that it says what lies behind the truth that bites question mark. It's actually more of an S with a dot underneath it, so it's a European question mark. And then a drawing, quote unquote, of some sort of a face. Are any of your characters familiar with Rome? Have you been here before? I think, Brian, you've been in the Vatican before. Is that correct? That would seem quite possible, yeah. Okay. Can you roll me knowledge specifically, Brian? Pass. Uh, By a lot? It's a 31 under 65. Oh, okay. Um, the odd drawing appears to be a circular face with an open mouth. Uh, Brian, you realize that this is meant to be the Boca della Verita, the mouth of truth. It's a giant, a gigantic stone mask six feet across that sits in the portico of the Church of Santa Maria in Cosmedin. Cosmedin. Um, I share that knowledge with the group. Everything here is Just old. as a reminder. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. You have the Ace of Spades? No. The Ace of Spades. Just as a reminder. I don't remember what that was. I don't remember what that was either, but I know that it's something that I do. <laughs> we're really good at this, Rob. I know. Um, we're like the best role players ever. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out what that means because I don't know what it means. Don't make Phil listen because then he'll know my character. Can I see that again? So we got to like, what, climb inside Oh, I mouth? know what that is. It doesn't apply here. I know. I'm just reminding you. Okay. I Isn't don't know. A... So I look at Brian and I ask him if it's a place. Is it a statue? It's, a, it's, a, it's in the church of, the, of Santa Maria in Cosmedin. Oh, that's right. Where? How far is that? It's in, it's in Rome. Should we? I think we should visit it. You think this was left we, by a contact? 
Yes. I think before we go anywhere, we should talk to the man in the tub. That's the guy. After idea. he's out of the tub. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we all barge in and start asking him questions. Which statue do you find this leaf near? Um, Marforio. Mario. Mario. Okay. Um, Brian, uh, I'm sorry, Aster, you also remember seeing these leaves kind of all over the floor of the shop. Oh. So clearly it came from, it, it's, it's um, very likely it came from their shop. Gotcha. So you do you want to share that? Yes, I'll share that. Okay. I understand your excitement over this leaf now. I told you it's a magic leaf. I wouldn't go so far as to say it is magic. Um, so about 40 minutes later, um, a gentleman comes out of the bathroom in a robe, um, kind of still drying his hair. He still looks rough. His face ha- is very weathered, as though he's been through a lot lately. His fingernails are still cracked, but the the mud and dirt that were crusted around them are gone. Um, he's kind. He's cleaned up the best he can, although his hair is kind of a mess and longer than it is fashionable right now. Um, he sits down to kind of to take a tea, like he motions for someone to bring him tea. Um, I'm gonna take it to him, and then I assume. Uh, since you suggested it, uh, uh, Carlos, you offered to pour a little scotch in there. Yeah, absolutely. He he nods, and then um, he seems a little out of sorts. But as he, he takes a first sip of tea, and he says, um, my name was Nikki. I was a member of Section D. Oh. Um. Did you have something to say, or you just okay? <laughs> just trying my, to remember if that's it's us. my off-camera look of surprise. My um, when I was Nikki, uh, I was arrested by the men in the fedoras, and they put me in the jail on um, on the island. Um, he starts to giggle a little bit. Um. He says, I, I spent time with the Queen of Heaven um, before they took me from there and assigned me to a gang of diggers near St. Peter's Basilica. You call him Dr. Jones, lady. Uh, when we were down below the ground, there were things in the labyrinth there, snakes. And they took many of the people I was with. I made it out alive, though. What is the island that he's referring to? Is that like a colloquial term for like, or like, is it a prison that's actually on an island or something? Uh, Roll knowledge. He's the Chateau Thief. Actually, Brian, you roll knowledge as well. (laughs) I fail. I pass. Um, there is an island in the Tiberis that used to be a, a hospital and, or it used to be just a hospital and, and some abandoned buildings from long ago. And they've turned those abandoned buildings into, uh, a prison for political, um, prisoners. So it's basically anyone that disagrees with Mussolini, that's probably where they're going to end up. I'd ask him if that was the island he went to. Yes. All this Italian work, do I get to check that box? Have you rolled it yet? No. No. <laughs> so you're doing all this in English currently? Mm, a little bit Italian, a little bit of English, yeah. Probably a lot more English than Italian, mostly because only you speak Italian. So, um, how did you escape? The tunnels go a little bit everywhere, and I found some unused, uncleaned out tunnels and fled. What were you digging for? The, the men with the wolves said that there was something important down there. Of course. How did they take your soul? I asked him in Italian. <laughs> when the snake clawed me, he cut Nikki away. What kind of snake? Big one. That's claw? That's oh, an Italian, sorry. 
No, no, no. You probably picked up on claw. You have you speak Spanish. It's not like it's a completely different word. Okay. You actually would probably say claw, like be yeah. confused. Um, he switches back to English and he says, "When the snake clawed me with its good hand, it stripped away Nikki and left only the statue." Big snake. What kind of big snake? Uh, he was probably six foot tall. Like part legs. person? Legs? Did it look mm. like a human? Like a person? No, it looked like a snake with legs. Like a, like a lizard? Arms. No. No. Um, he starts to describe... Sounds like a basilisk. He starts to describe um, essentially what is a snake person, but he describes it in such disgusting and weird fashion that you all need to give a sanity check as you listen. And if you make it, you're fine. If you fail, Yay. you lose one. Fail. I made it. While he describes the, can, know, the, the what'd you say? Can you, can you please uh, mark one off of my oh, sheet? Oh, sure. Yeah, I've got your sheet. Hold on. Mark off a couple. He doesn't need them. <laughs> yeah, you want the the fighting guy to go crazy. Yep. I'm good with handguns. Wouldn't be the first time. <clears throat> and I'm not a professor this time. I guess I should have had this actually in front of me. Oh, you haven't lost hardly any sanity. I know. Um, he describes the scales and the teeth. It sounds like um, we just watched the Star Trek episode where the snake people are on the ship. They're called Gorns. Snake people is a pejorative. No, they're, they're not they're Gorns. These rep- are the actual snake people. Reptilian. Is this is Discovery? For? No, this was an Enterprise. We watched a good Star Trek show. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> or not Enterprise. I'm sorry. Next Generation. We watched a good there we Star go. Trek show. That's better. Um, no, yeah. I mean, he literally describes a snake, but also that has arms and legs. Um, the... One of the arms is missing a hand, but he describes it that way on all of them. They're all missing the same hand. I don't remember which one's left or right. I'd have to look that up. Okay. Um, So there's more than one. Yeah, but they're also, he describes them clothed in robes that are dirty and um, tattered. I'm I'm trying to be more sympathetic than I normally would be. So sympathetic at all? Yeah, that's part of it. Yep. <clears throat> Can you roll persuade? <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, like my character is legitimately sympathetic. It's not persuading. Okay. He's okay. like he's more sympathetic now, and I'm a, I am putting a lot of stock and faith into this. Okay. Um. Mm. Yeah. Did, real quick, has Astra actually seen anything supernatural at this point? I can't remember. He not with you guys. Okay. Yeah, no, we're gonna stick with that. That's mm-hmm. fine. Um. So, um, I don't know the, the statue. I, Nikki continues I to like sip on his tea. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask him. Um, you said that it left only the statue. So, is the statue your representation of you as an agent? No. When they cut away Nikki, all that was left was the statue. I am only the statue now. How did the statue get into you? I've always been the statue since I've been here. Um, can someone, if anybody has psychology trained, you can roll that. Hopefully, somebody has psychology trained. It would seem that nobody has psychology trained. Awesome. Is it like lost in translation? No. Oh. No, he's saying it in English and he repeats it in Italian. Oh wait, I have psychology. Trained. Hey, there we so. go. <laughs> It's not very good. Yeah, well. So what if we take him to the actual statue and say, this is the statue, this is not you. What, what, what was the note <laughs> his on the... brain melts out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got I got a 41 over 15. Um, you get the impression that this is some sort of psycho- psychological break. I mean, that's a relatively easy... What, what did the magic leaf tell us? About a stone face. You guys circle? didn't write that down? It says, what lies beneath the truth that bites? Let's re- let's say that to him. I'll say that to him in Italian. Uh, he seems perplexed by the question. Like, he doesn't okay. know how to respond to you. It's a movie starring Robin Williams that's not going to come out for like 40 years, so don't worry about it. I pat him on the shoulder. <laughs> Do we have the 
the leaf handy? Yeah. I'll, I'll show it to him. Um, he, he takes it, kind of holds it for a second, and then puts it in his mouth and eats it. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. That's yeah. exactly what I was pulling for. And now she'll be with me forever. <laughs> he says as he's like chewing on it. Um, was she not with you before? No, when I was taken, I lost her. Oh, that's not good. She was not taken with you to the island? No. I like how you keep saying she. I Are don't there know who others? she is. Others what? She's. Lucretia. Yes, Lucretia's with me now forever. Yes. How about Dr. Jones? How about we go back to the... Um, You're going to have to get off of this Dr. Jones thing. I can't help the it. tourist shop and grab some more off the floor. I don't think they're all. You're they all really have gonna. Those you're really them. gonna feed into his his pica. That's not healthy. He needs help. <laughs> that so was it, out of character. I was just teasing you. I assume she's dead. Don't then. look so disheartened. Yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't. I don't know where she is. Well, I want the. Leaf. Okay. But well, the, but, but the leaves were her. She did not go to the tunnel. She wasn't captured. Ah. Uh. I was attempting to dismantle the railroad and got caught. So if Do you know where we might find her? At the at her shop? You were attempting to dismantle the railroad? Yes. Why are you fighting back? Fighting what? You're dismantling the railroad. Yes. He was. I mean, yeah, obviously he was. He's not currently, I hope. Um I mean, so you're you're fighting back. What what are you fighting for? Peace between everyone. That's vague. That's good. Do you remember where you left your explosives? Good they, question. They were taken by the police. Carlos looks angry by this answer. <laughs> <laughs> the Fedora police. Yes. Do you know of any other? Boom, Safe boom. houses, stockpiles, um, weapons caches. Are there any more of you? We had some weapons stashed, but they don't talk any longer. Mm, that's helpful. Do they not talk because they were found? I can't hear them. Okay. Uh, would you mind? I'll s- whisper to Carlos. I bet he means there's no more ammo. Yeah, well, we can find ammo. Do you remember where they uh, were left? Where they're sleeping? Roll, um... I don't know. Roll something. Sure. Got it. (laughs) Shut up. You're not helpful. (laughs) I rolled something. I got it. Let's roll roll your, uh, your, um... Jump? Yeah. (laughs) You break your ankle. I jump on his head to see if it jogs his memory. Let's, Let's have you roll... Not that. That's a bad idea. Let's roll your power times four. Okay. I was going to have you roll appearance, but you might be lacking in that particular. Hey, I get a four. Oh, wow. Um, He reaches out towards your face, to the burn side of your face. Sure. And you feel the hand, like he doesn't press, but he just kind of just gently across it. And he says, yes, I will take you to them. Good. You are broken like they were. Probably. All right, I think that's actually a really good place for us to stop for this episode. Um, And we will get back to this next week and talk to you guys then. I just have to find it. There it is. And that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or find us over on Facebook and Twitter at facebook.com slash nerdsdomain and twitter.com slash nerdsdomain. You can also check out our site at nerdsdom.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Passion Nerdly for our music. Don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com slash nerdsdomain and check out our shirts at TeePublic.